Helen Peters was jogging along Burlington Bay early one morning. As she stopped to cool down, she noticed a patch of fog over the water. It seemed to be moving into shore. As the eerie white mist drifted closer, she could make out an old ship emerging from the fog. Suddenly, there was a blood-curdling scream. Fearing someone was in trouble, she ran towards the sound. The screaming escalated, seeming to come from all directions. Then, just as suddenly, the mist cleared and there was no ship in sight. The screaming abruptly stopped and she was alone on the empty shore. Once a lively port, Burlington Bay Harbor is now a virtual no man's land. However, passers-by have said they've heard the agonizing scream of a man echoing across the waters. And on stormy nights, a ship can be seen floating in the fog. This apparition is believed to be the cargo ship where Jem Horner met his doom in 1827. Jem Hormer and two mates were unloading a shipload of quarry rocks onto the pier. Jem slipped and lost his footing, wedging his leg into a small crevice between the dock and the boat. Before he could get his injured leg out, the boat rolled into the dock and crushed his leg. His screams of agony could be heard for miles. His leg was horribly mangled, and he was crying in pain. Jem's shipmates were a callous pair, with no fondness for Jem Hormer. Hoping to claim his share of the wages, they pulled him away from the boat and left him to die at the back door of a nearby tavern. The tavern owner heard Jem's screams, dragged the injured man inside, and called a doctor. When the doctor arrived, Jem was in extreme pain. He had lost a lot of blood and was losing life. The leg was so mangled, it couldn't be saved. The doctor made a grim decision to amputate immediately. The operation would have to be performed right there in the back room of the tavern. It was a brutal procedure with no anesthesia and the most basic of tools. Despite the doctor's best efforts, Jem had already lost too much blood and did not survive the operation. The doctor gave the tavern owner Jem's amputated leg with instructions to bury it, but the tavern owner didn't think it was right to bury the man without his leg, so he put it in a keg of whiskey to preserve it until the funeral. In a gruesome turn of events, the very same shipmates who had left Jim to die outside the tavern came upon the keg and stole it. They stayed up all night drinking whiskey. It wasn't until two days later, when an inquest was called, that they discovered Jim's severed leg had been in the keg they were drinking from. Patrick Cross and his team from Burlington Ghost and Haunting Researchers have been documenting the Jim Horner ghost for a number of years. Okay, we're here at the um, inlet, the actual location, the or original Burlington Bay, and this is where we believe Jim Horner's ghost really is, including many people hearing his deathly screams that still uh, resonate in the air today. Um, right on the shoreline here where all the rocks are, uh, this is the best spot with a perfect view where the actual boat came in and where the um, where you can actually get the best uh, sighting and possibly sounds in the ghost sounds of Jim Horner himself that appear right in, the, right in this area. Um, in order to uh, find ghost activity, 
I use you this as a standard compass, and it would pick up electromagnetic field energy. There it goes. It was one of, in one of the areas that's more active. There it goes. Yeah, there it goes. This is a um, digital thermometer, meaning that um, you can actually, the temperature go up and down within plus and minus one degree. If the temperature drops in a matter of seconds, you will actually see that. Although we're outdoors, um, there is a bit of a cold spot here, meaning it's colder than it, was, and it is on this side here. So I do feel a lot of cold air around Michelle, especially. Uh, as you notice, the compass is going crazy right now. Uh, the temperature is dropping drastically. So this would be a typical good example. Uh, now, why is there EMF or energy here? Because this is all rock and wood, so it shouldn't be anything electrical whatsoever. So ghosts are made up of elect electrons, positive and negative electrons, and there is a lot of activity here. Um, and now it's, it's probably still dropping. It's still dropping over here. So it was constant here. It's still dropping. Look at that. Look at that. It's really going now. Uh, a lot of activity over here. That's, that's bizarre. Wow. And, of course, the temperature is still dropping. I'm, I'm feeling a lot of cold air right here. Uh, most of the times you won't get this because the compass will stay due north. The only way this can happen is if there is a lot of ghost activity around us. And it's now dropped to 60.4. When I go back over here, it goes back up again. It starts going back. So there is a lot of the cold air, cold presence in right in this spot here, which is the area probably where Jim was working or had died. Did you hear that? I heard that. That was a little thump. Well, that's not, that shouldn't be there, because <laughs> there's nothing there. I know, there we just, that sounded like a boat, a thumping yes, of a exactly, boat. Yeah. We just heard that. Uh, bang. Yeah. It was like a, a, a boat banging yeah. against the shore. Yeah. yeah. And that's typical what you'd hear, uh, boats crashing or the screams. OK. OK, um, as we're emerging out from the other side, there's, there was a lot of bit of ghost energy in there. And, uh, when we investigated this uh, previous, by the, the actual shores and the rocks, we found other ghost energy as well as we got ghost ectoplasm and mist. Ooh, that makes it really? Right here. Okay, try, there it is. Putting, putting okay. right in here. Yeah, it's really freezing right here. Right here, Jim, you're right. It's freezing. It is. It's really cold as opposed to over there. It's nice and warm. It's freezing right here. Well, could be moving around as well. I don't know. Well, you were, like you said, you're getting an orb. Look here, Michelle. Feel this. Holy cow. Oh, wow. Wow. Jeez, oh, man, it's a really large amount. It's, it's gone. It's gone again. There it is. It's like warm. See? It's moving up. Yeah. Uh, That's just unreal. Uh, I think Jim is very curious as to what we're all doing out here tonight because we're feeling him uh, very strong in uh, getting a lot of pockets of energy. There he goes. It's like we're being observed by the, what we're observing. It's like the hunter is now being the hunted. It's um, the ghosts are now watching us. We're trying to look for ghosts, but yet they're watching us. It's little pockets, but it's concentrated energy. It's just freezing right here. Over here, it's gone, and it's right around mostly Michelle and Jim right now. When we first came down here, uh, we were getting very little active energy, and now we've uh, we've attracted, and they're excited. Now they're all over the place over here uh, because we're open to it. We're we're, um, we're we're calling on it, and it, it seems to be here. I really got the impression that we were being watched the entire time. I know we talked about that a little bit tonight, um, but I really felt as though we were not the ones really doing the investigating, that we had um, ghosts, ex you know, basically investigating us. They were very curious as to what we were doing. Um, and of course, I was really fascinated by the large bang that we heard tonight, because when we rushed out to the, to the lake, there was literally nothing there. And that was, that was pretty impressive. Nearly 170 years later, there have been numerous sightings of a ghost ship in the harbor, and reports of Jim Horner's screams heard across the bay. They hope to find new evidence for their file on Jim Horner's ghost. If you happen to come down to Burlington Bay, take a moment to listen for Jim Horner's screams. You may even see a phantom ship or see Jim Horner's ghost.
hobbling along the rocky shore.